Hello and welcome back. Okay, today I'm celebrating something. When I woke up, my subscriber count was at 511, which in binary is this. And when I was having my coffee, it rolled over to this. So this might not look like a round number to you, but if you spend all your time as I do working in digital stuff, this is a very round number. So um, I'm quite pleased with that. Certainly more than I expected to have at any point when I first started posting videos. So I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for everyone who's been watching, everyone who's subscribed, and particularly anyone who's liked a video or commented, because that really does give me a little bit of a bolster. I probably need to uh, give a special shout out as well to Sion, the unexpected maker. He gave me a shout out on one of his live streams, and I think that's uh, probably about 10% of that subscriber count. So thank you very much, Sion. Right, I'm doing some soldering today. I showed in my mailbag video these little boards which are designed to create easy access and interconnection between uh, the final boards in my processor. Although these are, these are temporary, they're going to be with me for a little while and they're going to make my life a lot easier. I'm hoping I've got enough of these uh, pin headers. I want to put these turn pin ones in the locations that interface to the boards above and then use these ones where they're going to be interfacing onto Japont connectors, which are the kind of temporary connections back into breadboard land. I've been very busy for the last few weeks with things unrelated to making the processor board or any of the other projects I'm doing, but things are starting to ease up a little bit now, I think. Hopefully I'll be able to get back to slightly faster progress. Just turning the soldering iron up slightly because it's uh, sort of temperature more appropriate for surface mount work. Through hole soldering is so very easy compared to the surface mount. Right, two more of those. Right, so this board sits at the top and provides the connections to the A register and to the program counter. And then this little grid of pins here are all the inputs to the bus control. This sits at the bottom, provides the outputs to the constant register and the destination index register. It also provides all the additional outputs to drive the transfer register, hopefully the right outputs to drive the memory bridge and all the otherwise unallocated device load and device assert lines which I bring out down here. Oh, the ALU assert is there which needs to go up to the ALU. Looks like one manufacturer's turned pins are very, very slightly shorter than another's. I don't think it's enough to uh, cause me problems in the build itself. It does potentially cause me problems trying to line these things up here. And that is why you check both sides before soldering the rest of them. I do have one big question for everyone. I've got to finish the transfer register. I've got to implement memory. And then there's a few, I have a little bits of circuitry that will all happen quite quickly to just finish connecting things up. But once I'm done with that, what I'm going to have to do is spend quite a lot of time programming and testing. I've got plans for a couple of initial peripherals, but very soon I'm going to have to spend quite a lot of time on the software side of things. So my question is, 
how much programming do you want to see? So I could make you hour long videos of, uh, of me typing away on a keyboard, which I think nobody wants to watch and I don't really want to edit it. I could do some much shorter videos just demoing various bits as I, I get code working, different functions and stuff. Or what? I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you want to see. I know we already checked one of these before, but I didn't keep track of which one it was. I don't think either of those joints I just fixed up were actually a problem, but if I don't see a little bit of surface tension towards both contacts, then uh, I had a bit of solder to make myself feel more comfortable. If these don't sit side by side very well. Okay, I don't seem to have any vertical eight ways. I don't see why I can't bend the leads on a horizontal one and then cut them short after soldering. Okay, and we're done. Okay, so this one goes at the bottom. These three in the middle. There'll be a bit of spacing between these. And that's at the top. So it's all the connections to the existing boards, including the new bus control. This is the chained on connection for the transfer register but I'm expecting that's going to go very quickly to a PCB. I may even only part build it on breadboard because there's a lot of replication. So just prove out the functionality and then move it straight to a board that can sit alongside the rest of the registers. But yeah, that is quite a nice, neat little product. It's uh, remarkably easy to do this kind of um, through hole soldering. So now I've got two to the power of nine subscribers. Next up, two to the power of 10, it's 1,024. Probably take me six months to get there if I'm lucky, but uh, yeah, I'll do a video when I get there as well, if I ever make it. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching, goodbye.